I think David, and give him credit, has made a lot of money, close to a billion dollars on this seven-year trade here. So I think at the end of the day, he made some money and wants to, to bank his, his uh, winnings here. I, I don't think that the substance of what he said has much merit around the China stuff. He said that was a small part of it. But at the end of the day, what I think is most important here is this is symbolic of what is a shift in investor psychology. The old school Apple investors were ones that played product cycles. That was David in playing the iPhone boom and bust product cycle. We're moving to a new era, which is Apple as a service, and investors like David understand that this is, com this is coming and are grappling with how to value Apple as a service. So I think that's at the substance of what he's doing. He made some money and recognizing there's a paradigm shift coming in the story. But Gene, I mean, I, I guess that's exactly his point. Is uh, he's saying he's always believed uh, that Apple's a luxury good company that could defend uh, its brand through a mixture of hardware and software, but that everyone now realizes that, and, and thus the sort of easy money has been made. And, and he actually goes on in the second page to talk more broadly about tech valuations. I mean, are you not concerned that it is such a consensus type play at the moment? I don't think that there's as much upside in Apple shares over the next seven years as the past seven years. So I'd agree with David on that. And I think broader tech valuations are extended right now, but I think Apple is a little bit of a different animal. In particular, not just because the multiple is lower, but because investors historically have thought of this as a hardware business. But now the hardware is operating like a software business, like a services type of high visibility business. Over the last eight quarters, iPhone growth has been 1%, been very tight range around that 1%. That's symbolic of uh, a software type of visibility. And so to answer your question, I'm not concerned about Apple. I think that there is substantial upside going forward because I think as more investors start to understand that this, in fact, is a different Apple today than it was over the past eight years, that will be positive for the multiple. Ed, I understand that you don't own any Apple shares and neither does the firm, but if you're someone that's in the same position as you and you're looking at Einhorn's past performance in Apple shares, Gene Munster points out he actually did pretty well. Granted, this quarter wasn't so great uh, for Mr. Einhorn. Do you, do you follow his idea at this point? Are you going to walk away from Apple? Or are you saying, hey, it sold off the last two days. Maybe this is an attractive point to get in. Well, on a trade, perhaps, but as a long-term investment, I think he's got a lot of merit in what he's saying, and I don't agree that Apple is a service play if it doesn't sell hardware. The services are pulled through iPhone. Look at the profit and the revenue. It all comes from iPhone. So, yeah, the future, as they're articulating it now, is a service play, but that doesn't work out very well if you start losing subscribers, and their unit volume sales on iPhone, the flagship product that generates all the revenue, all the profit, and pulls through all that services, has been flat to down for three years and mark my words after the problems you're facing with the uh, with the current version the XS or the antenna problems you're probably going to see a weak unit volume year again this year so they're grappling toe-to-toe -to -toe with the same problem that all handset companies that matured and ran out of ideas have done in the past Motorola Nokia rim and so far I have not heard them articulate a strategy on how they're gonna avoid the same Thing that happened to those companies and unless you've got someone like Jobs innovating something new that no one's seen before you're probably going to get stuck in the same cycle. Ed, what about the China issue whether we're talking about their supply chain or their sales uh, is China going to weigh on, on their numbers for the next year or so whilst this sort of trade battle continues? Well, there's, there's a shift going on uh, generically in the handset business at this point. The high end has saturated. You see it, like I said, three years in Apple's results, and you've seen it for the last three or four years in Samsung's results, the two companies that have dominated the high end. And the Chinese are now starting to move up to that. They declared in July of last year they will be the first country in the world to deploy a fully functional 5G system. Whether or not that happens remains to be seen. But to get there, they're going to have to start mimicking more of the high end phone architectures and they are so in the last six to nine months they've accelerated dramatically what they're doing in phones now whether that's successful or not remains to be seen but the competitive dynamic of that is certainly going to start to bear on the on the high-end guys and if you study handsets if you look at the core business that is Apple's core business you'll see that the Chinese are starting to ascend They've got the downside of the economic war or the tariff war and the, and the economy is weakening, so that's going to tail some of it off. So it remains to be seen how this plays out, but that it is playing out, I have no doubt at all.